Well, hello everybody and welcome back to Lisa's Coloring Corner. I had a subscriber request to flip through all of Johanna Bassford's books. So, as the majority of us know, Johanna has put out quite a number of books. So, this may be a lengthy video. Go grab your favorite drink. Kick back, put your feet up, and relax. <laughs> I am, because there are so many books um, in her series of books, I am going to be flipping through these rather quickly. Um, I am assuming that this subscriber may be new to coloring and just wanted to see all of Johanna's books. So I am going to do that for her. All right, let me get these others out of the way. Okay, so... Her very first book, as we all know, let me zoom in a little. Whoa, too much, too much. Let's go back out a tad. Okay, was Secret Garden, and this is the book that started it all, right? Uh, Johanna's Secret Garden really got the adult coloring craze going. So we have a cover on many of her books um, not all of them but and then this comes off and you can color this whole thing as you can see it is ivory colored mine is probably getting a little bit dark um, especially around the edges and stuff because it has been in my bookcase for a while as most of ours have and then we have this tanned paper cardstock cover i know a lot of people take their covers off and just store their book like this so that this doesn't get ruined. I just leave mine on my books. Now this book is printed on cream, real ivory type of paper, not your bright white, but it's all, all of her books are printed on very nice paper. The paper is a little bit different between the countries though, so depending upon where you buy your book from, um, it may be on a little bit different paper. In the beginning, as you can see, I'll scroll in, I did have a stamp made up um, with my name. And then I bought some ink pads and I would stamp my name in my books. I haven't done that in ages, but I used to do that. <laughs> so I got my name on the nameplate page. Let's zoom back out. I don't have, well, I used to have really nice handwriting, but with my shakiness problem and stuff now, yeah, not so much. Here we have all of the hidden items that you're supposed to find throughout the book. So you're supposed to find five moths, a shark, seven slugs. There's all kinds of things to find that are kind of hidden within her pictures. And then she has a little welcome page and we get into the pictures themselves. Now, Johanna's books are mm, quite detailed. As you can see, they are definitely adult coloring books, but they are gorgeous. You know, some of these definitely need fine liners to color. I would, I actually, I should get my fine liners out and do that one. I have to get my Johanna books out more. These, all of her books are double-sided. So, no alcohol markers unless you want to sacrifice a page, but I don't think there's too many of us that want to do that. I was doing some uh, demonstrating in the past of my Xyron sticker maker. <laughs> so that's where those dots are from. Now in the beginning, her first, hmm, is it only this book or the next one too? Um, she doesn't do it anymore, but in the beginning, just like Kirby Rosanis's books, um, she and he both would have you draw in additional things. I think they discovered that most of us don't want to draw and that we basically just want to color. So, but in uh, this particular book, she does have you draw in some things. Here we have a maze to color in, another one for fine liners. Here she wants you to draw some more topiaries in the pots. So, yeah, she has you doing a few things. Here's another one where I was showing how to use the sticker maker. I printed this out and I 
used my sticker maker and we put some flowers in one of the pots. <laughs> That's why it's flagged. Again, I know most of you guys have seen these books, but here's one I colored in back in April of 2016. I started this well. <laughs> Didn't get too far, did I? It was actually turning out okay, too. Oh, geez, I gotta, should get back to that. <laughs> she does have some double page spread, something like this. So you, of course, wouldn't have to do both pages. You could do just the one. This one I colored. I love how this one turned out. My blending and everything. I was so proud of that one. <laughs> That's when I colored more with my pencils. Gotta get back into my pencils. Here I was doing, I did the background on this one. I believe, yeah, that was with pencils. That's all pencil. So now I just have to <laughs> do the picture itself. I did start some of the flowers. Didn't realize I had whips. Jeez. <laughs> I always said I never have whips because once I start a picture, I got to finish it. Well, I guess I just made a layer out of myself. Here are a couple that you could really do some neat backgrounds to. Although she technically wanted you to add more to those pictures. I have seen this one done and oh, I've seen, seen it so many gorgeous ways. Wants you to f draw some more birds and things, create more flowering branches, continue with the vine, another double page spread, another maze, take the key and you find your way through to get to the door. So she has some fun and games in this book. I've seen this one colored a lot too. Oh, so pretty. Oh, this one too I've seen. Oh, well, I've seen many of these. Here again, I was showing <laughs> using my sticker maker I was it says fill the white space with lots of butterflies so I printed some images off and then demonstrated how to put a couple of butterflies in here with the sticker maker if anybody's interested in that let me know I can either do a demo of it again or I can refer you back to the video where I did that that's why the little stickers are in there yet and then you hear, here you have your um, answer key where it shows you where all of the bugs and stuff are from the beginning of the book that you're supposed to find. And some of my stuff from my sticker maker is on the back. All right, so that is Secret Garden. Let me get this off my finger now. Okay, then her second book, Enchanted Forest. Again, we have a cover on this one, just like Secret Garden. You can color that in. And then here's her cardstock cover. And the title page, nameplate page. See, I already didn't, didn't uh, put my name in there. I should find that thing again. Hmm. Wonder where that went. Here again, things, let me slide it over a little bit, things you should find throughout the book. And then we get into the pictures themselves. This is a map to be colored in. Uh, that's another one I've seen colored in a lot in like metallics. So this, as the name implies, are a lot of forestry type things because Enchanted Forest, but still a lot of 
you know, floral type of things, a lot of greenery. But just beautiful. I love the way she draws. How many of you are collectors like me and you have all of Johanna's books? <laughs> I wasn't going to buy her last one where you have, it teaches you how to draw. But because, you know, I have to have the entire sets, you know, I had to get it. I doubt whether I will ever draw in it, but it does also have some pictures to color, which you'll see when I get to that book. As you can hear, again, very nice paper. This also is on like an ivory tinted paper. It's not bright white. But yeah, her books are always printed on awesome paper. She uh, does not have her books, of course, printed through Amazon. She goes through an independent publisher and they are very picky about what paper they use. They test out a ton of different papers before they decide on what each book is going to be printed on. And like I said, some countries' books are printed on a little bit different paper than what ours are here in the States. So if you do get a, another country's version of a book, it may be a little bit different paper than what ours are. So just be aware of that. You know, if you have this book and you're, say, Polychromos works awesome on this paper and then you get a different version, maybe your Polychromos won't work quite, quite as well and, say, your Prismacolors would work better. In the back here, we have a Humongo picture because it's the Hidden Dragon picture way in the back and both pages fold out so it's a four page spread. <laughs> so lots and lots of teeny details. And then you can color this side of it also. Here's the last side of it. And then again, the answer key in the back. So that's the second book. Then she came out with, and I had this one spiral bound. Um, I was in the beginning, starting to get in into spiral binding a lot of my books. I don't do that any longer, but I did have this one spiral bound. This one seems to be everybody's, uh, I can't say least favorite because it's not. It's got some stunning images in it. This is Lost Ocean. And again, it folds out. Um, this one, however, is extremely detailed. It's more detailed than her previous two. And you'll, you'll see that as I flip through. Here's some more hidden things to find. Her intro. I did color this one. This is when I, you know, first got into coloring in um, her books. Again, 2016, March, March 1st. Um, and I started getting into gel pens and fine liners and then did pastels in the background. But again, yeah, quite, quite detailed. Now this one's not so bad, but some of the pages are quite detailed. Like this, for instance, is quite detailed. Again, fine liner work. Although you have a sharp tip on your pencil. Pencils would work too. Look at this one. I mean extremely detailed. The really nice thing about having them spiral bone is it lays down so nice and flat. The only problem is when you have double page spreads you do have that in the middle. But other than that having them spiral bound are kind of nice. This one I have seen a number of people do. Uh, this, I mean, it's definitely fine liner work and stuff. And yeah, you just have to take your time and work a little bit, put it aside, work on it a little bit. But yeah, I've seen that done very, very nicely. 
We have some sharks. Another quite detailed nautical one. Another one you could really, you know, experiment with some backgrounds on there, maybe with some pastels. Really detail in here again. And this double page spread, extremely detailed. These books also take like your watercolor pencils and ink tints really nicely. As long as you're, you know, you don't use too much water because no matter how nice the paper, you definitely, you know, don't want your paper soaking wet. Another double page spread. Extremely detailed in here too. Another nice one for backgrounds. Couple of simpler pages. <laughs> and then the answer key. Okay, next we have the Magical Jungle. And I think, hmm, might be one of my favorites. Um, I do like Secret Garden and I do like, um, you know, the, uh, oh gosh, Enchanted Forest. But I really do like Magical Jungle. Again, comes with this cover. This one, however, is not a separate dust jacket. This one just folds out and you can color this in. The back also folds out and you can color that in. So, magical jungle. Name plate page. Again, things to find throughout the book and her introduction. She does include some tips in here. And then we get to the book itself. Now this one isn't quite as detailed as Lost Ocean, for the most part. Of course, there are some, you know, smaller details and, and things here and there. But for the most part, this book is not nearly as detailed. I think Lost Ocean is her by far the most detailed out of all of her books. Started doing this one. This uh, background is with Pasca paint pens. And uh, yeah, I went around through all of that, but I got a little discouraged <laughs> because if you look over here, you can start to see where I was coloring and stuff. And I don't know, <laughs> I ended up not liking it. But uh, yeah, I should get back to uh, finishing that. Let's zoom out a little more. And I did color the background black with Pasca on both of these. This is the first page that I did when I got my Holbein pencils. And I love how this turned out until I dropped what was it something i can't remember what it was on here and i tried and tried to fix it am i still recording because hmm yes i am still recording sorry guys i'm gonna have to edit that out <laughs> i don't know why my uh tablet all of a sudden disconnected. Okay, let me straighten you out. If I forget to edit that out, I apologize. Um, but yeah, I tried to fix this and uh, yeah, but it's still, I, I think it turned out great. I love these colors together. Should have written down what colors I all use together, like these blues and whatnot. Tried something really different here. <laughs> but yeah, I like how that turned out. And then this one, pastels in the background, colored pencils. I'm not sure again. I think that's polychromos. It's 
uh, while I may not have covered colored a lot out of her books, I did color some. But I definitely should get these back out again. I've just been in, you know, the past few years, it's just been all gel pen, gel pen, gel pen, and now marker, marker, marker. <laughs> Have to get my pencils back out. Because I do enjoy coloring with pencils. It's just I'm, I'm getting to be such an impatient colorist. And it's like, I just, you know, rather than just sitting and enjoying the process, I wish I could do that more. <laughs> it seems like, yeah, I'm just in a hurry, in a hurry. Got to get on to the next picture. And with colored pencils, you just can't do that. And you shouldn't. You know, you should just, I enjoy blending. I am not a layering person. Definitely do not like to layer pencils but I do like blending. Here's one where I was experimenting. I had put in gesso, clear gesso on here, and I was experimenting with a lot of different coloring mediums. Yeah, not a whole lot worked. So this is my experimental page. Not a whole lot worked on there. <laughs> And again, the answer key. So again, that was Magical Jungle. Then we have Johanna's Christmas. So she does have a Christmas book out too. You can see the nice shiny. All of her books, um, if I didn't mention this, all of her books have some type of foiling on them. Again, that differs between countries. Ours in the United States for this one happens to have the green and the red foiling on ours. But I believe in other countries, I don't think it's red and green. I think it's just gold, possibly. Um, but again, your fold out flap. No longer does she put dust covers where that come off on hers, her books. It's just the fold out flap in the front and the back. So. Here is your nameplate page. Again, ivory type of paper, not bright white. So as the name implies, these are all Christmas pictures. Now, this is one exception to all of her other books as these are single-sided. There's just a pattern on the back of each page. So when you see the blank with just the light pattern on the back, you know you're going to have a double page spread. Of course, you can do one at a time. And we have our gingerbread house. I've seen a lot of people do this one too. Here I colored this one in with, I believe, was it gel pens? I did this um, last Christmas as a is it a color along or I just participated in a color along? Can't remember. I think that one was done with fine liners. Didn't look like gel pens. Here comes another double page spread. The Christmas Village. So you could actually use your alcohol markers in this particular book. Just, of course, whenever you use alcohol markers, you put a sheet of cardstock, a blotting page, back behind so you don't ruin the next page. And I colored this one. Now this one is all in glitter gel pen. Not sure if I like that one or not. I'm not too crazy about the bright yellow background. <laughs> Something different, I guess. Another double page spread. And I colored this one in, again, all glitter gel pen. It's all kinds of pretty Christmas pictures. Now the double page spread coming up. This is a nice double page spread because it doesn't go right into the binding. So many double page spreads, you know, go right into the binding and it gets really hard to color. And 
And one last double page spread. And here she does include a color palette test page in this book, which is nice. Again, flap on the back, you can color in the cover. Okay, then we have a different type of book that she came out with. This is called Ivy and the Inky Butterfly, A Magical Tale to Color. Now she actually wrote, this is a storybook that is, uh, the, that you color in also. You color in the pictures, the illustrations to the coloring book or to the story. And Johanna Bassford actually wrote this story and her daughter's name is Ivy. So it's um, after, uh, it's a story for her daughter. So again, we have the flap that you color in because her daughter's name is Ivy. So we have the nameplate page. And this is, let me uh, get out the other books. This is a different size. It is quite a bit narrower, as you can see, than her other books. Her other books are all about 10 by 10, I believe, right? So this one, as you can see, is the same height, but it is narrower. Okay, I thought I'd point that out. So, here starts out with the story and then you color the pictures just like a, a regular children's book where you know all of the illustrations are colored in you are the colorist of the illustrations in this particular storybook now you'll see some of the pages do not have a part of the story on some of them mainly are part of the story itself and some of them are combinations. So, really cute story. Beautiful, as usual, beautiful pictures. There's Ivy looking out the door. I don't believe I have colored in this book yet. Love these pages though. I should get my pencils out. Yeah, I keep saying that. <laughs> As in all her other books, so many pretty flowers. Again, kind of an ivory tint to the paper. Oh, I did color one in. <laughs> I lied. Um, and this is all with fine liners. Nothing like colors that'll jump off the page at you, right? <laughs> so again, just reading through the story. Isn't that cute? Coloring in the illustrations. Here's a double page spread. As you can see, some of the pages have a lot more of the story than uh, some pages. Other pages just have, you know, a little bit. And like I said, some of them have, I like it when she has these sections like this. Yeah, the double page spread. Dragons. So it's quite a lengthy story. We have plenty of pictures to color in this book.
can imagine, because of the title, there's lots of pretty butterflies in here. And then we have all of the little things at the end to color. And again, she includes her uh, color palette test page. And here's the, the end. Okay, so that is her storybook, Ivy in the Inky Butterfly. And then her latest one is the one I wasn't going to purchase, and I thought, yeah, I've got to complete the collection. This is How to Draw Inky Wonderland. Create and color your own magical adventure. So she actually teaches us how she draws the things that she draws in the books. So like the flowers and things like that. So here again, we have the fold-out flap in the front. You can color that in. nameplate page. Then she has an introduction and some tips, which if you're going to do this book, really good tips in the front. It, I would highly recommend reading through those tips and the materials that she suggests using throughout this book. Really good tips also. So here she goes through, she's broken it out by category. So here is the garden category goes through, shows you exactly how to come up with this. So she makes it look very, very easy, right? <laughs> and actually when she splits it out like this, it, it does make it look quite simple. Again, I have not tried it, so using this, you draw some of your own over here. But again, follow the tips that she has in the front of the book where you'd use pencil first and, and whatnot. It, it will it will make it less frustrating. <laughs> so here she goes through some leaves, play with them over there, and then create your own floral borders. There's some flowers and leaves. So here you get to play around with everything that you've learned. So here is a page that you can just color. So it's not all drawing. Another page to color. Here it teaches you some bugs. You can add bugs onto this page if you want. Some more flowers. Here she teaches you symmetry. So how she draws half of the page and then it gets duplicated over to the other half. So if you ever wonder how her the right hand of the page so exactly matches, that's how she, she explains it here, how she does it. Then, of course, we have to get into the different kinds of butterflies. Then her spherical motifs. She talks about how she colors all or draws all of those in her garlands. Symmetrical crest. The different patterns that she uses throughout um, her pictures. Then we get into the ocean section. So her fish and things from Lost Ocean. Although some of these things like the seaweeds and stuff, you may see you know, some of this throughout other books, not just Lost Ocean, but the majority of these things are from Lost Ocean. Teaches you how to draw the ship. Some more of the fish. Seaweed tangle. And then different types of treasure. No, I don't even know. You know, I would say, you know, the anchor and nautical things. She has flotsam and jetsam. <laughs> Crabs. Ocean patterns. Seashells. Seaweed. Here she's kind of combining a number of things together because we have that ship there and we have different seaweeds here and, you know, a number of different things. Drawing the ship in the bottle. Ocean ribbon motif. Your jellyfish, lobster. Then we get into the forest. So you can imagine what's in here. Yes, lots of leaves. <laughs> Wildflower stems, leafy bugs, mushrooms and toadstools, 
forest finds. And again, she just, she makes it look so easy. Vines. Then you can fill this whole page with vines. It says, try adding a few little details among the leaves. Hidden keys, a butterfly, or even a songbird. Sure, not this girl. <laughs> Here's all your ferns. Borders. She has a number of different borders. She's done throughout the books, as you could see. Then we get into the trees. Her secret door. She's got a number of secret doors in her books. Owl. So here you can practice your owl. And then birds. And we all know she's got a number of different kinds of birds throughout her books. Woodland garland. And then the end. And she does include a test page. Use this space to test your pens and pencils. And then we have the back flap that you can also color in. On the back, she talks about all of her other books. <gasps> Where is my World of Flowers book? My goodness. I am missing that one. Hmm, let me just quick glance here if I have it here. Where did I put World of Flowers? Because that is one of my favorites. Let me pause quick. I'm going to go grab oh, it. Oh, no, I cannot find my world of flowers coloring book. Where in the world? Because that is the one, I, I did put that one separate because that is the book I started coloring out of, oh gosh, probably close to a year ago with you guys on camera where I was blending with my uh, Prismacolors and never got back to the picture. And for the longest time, I did have it here on my desk thinking I was going to get around to coloring out of it again, and I never did. So took it off my desk, and now you think I can find it? I can't believe I didn't put it back in the bookcase. Anyhow, to the subscriber that requested the flip through of these books, there is an additional one that came in back here. It's, it's a more recent one, and it's called World of Flowers. And that, again, I think World of Flowers is probably, out of all of hers, probably my all-time favorite. <laughs> and that's why I had picked it to color that picture up. Um, and now I don't have it. I am so sorry. I am so sorry. But if you really want to see a flip through of that particular book, um, either I have a flip through on my channel, just look in my flip throughs playlist, or else you can see a gazillion flip throughs of it here on YouTube. So you would just have to search for, uh, you know, Johanna Bassford's World of Flowers. Um, and you'll see a ton of videos. So again, I apologize. I, I thought I had them all here, but I guess not. So anyhow, um, I hope you enjoyed the flip throughs of all of these books. Again, the majority of us have seen all of these books. They are very, very famous, famous books. Um, but to anybody that is new to coloring, I hope this is kind of helpful. Um, she's, you know, the number one on uh, the coloring book artistry list, if you want to put it that way. And uh, yeah, so that's why so many of us are so familiar with her. But again, new to coloring, you may not be so familiar with her. So I hope you enjoyed the flip throughs. Um, if you did, please hit that like button. Subscribe if you are new to my channel. I hope everybody's having a terrific day. And as always, happy coloring. Bye, guys.